In this video, we'll demonstrate a little bit more about rectangular subsurfaces on components in OpenVSP. Now let's start with the wing and take a look at how rectangles behave on this kind of surface. Again, the U direction on a wing is along the span, the W direction is around the chord. So a rectangular surface, if we identify, say, the center U and W coordinates on the wing, will position this shape. We can adjust the length of U of this and the W length as well. And again, because this is a closed boundary, we can choose inside or outside as the region that's identified in, say, any type of export process or analysis in VSP. Now, theta is going to rotate this in UW coordinate space rather than, say, in XYZ coordinate space. So if we look from the top view here, only two degrees of theta rotation is giving us something that's quite different than you know, here versus here, uh, because the way that the U stretching is happening is slightly different. Let's set this back to zero. And notice that if we come to the section and start to move the sweep around, the shape of this patch is also changing as the U and W coordinates get stretched with how we define this wing. And so it's important to keep in mind that again, the U, W coordinates are defining where these boundaries are and not necessarily any physical position on, say, the wing surface. Now, this is really handy because you can come to the subsurface, set it as a rectangle, and say, adjust the W position so that it's somewhere here along the leading edge. And then let's say that you want to designate some region of the leading edge of this wing as having different surface properties for, say, a parasite drag analysis, or if you want to mark it for, uh, say icing or something like that, you can absolutely do that. What you need to keep in mind is that a rectangle is not the way that you identify a control surface on a wing. There's a special type that's used for that, and I'll show you why. If we adjust the center W back far enough, you'll see that it starts to collapse on W equals 1 or back at W equals 0 because the rectangular subsurface can't assign a value greater than 1 or less than 0. That's not how UW coordinate space works. Similarly, if we would try and drive the center U back far enough, it'll just collapse down to the camber line or out uh, at the tip. And so something to keep in mind is that there is a different component intended for things like that. Let's come back and take a look at how rectangles behave on a, this stack component. And uh, I'll center this up here just so that I can keep track of it. So these both are rectangle bounds on UW coordinate space on this stack. So let's take a look at how these behave. And you will see that I have two of these positioned at different W locations. So if I start to move center W around here, you can see that it's moving in the W direction around this body. It's maintaining its U and W length. If I start to move this around here, now it starts to stretch into something that we think a bit more of, say, a rectangle shape. But again, because these lines are following UW lines on the body itself, we can adjust the scaling. And so the physical length of this patch is going to be based on how many cross sections you have on a body and where the UW coordinates are. So again, build your component first, then identify subsurface patches. But you'll see in particular that just like with a subsurface line, the slew, the shape, the interpolation of these lines on the UW surface of this body are going to change how this rectangular patch is shaped. But again, these are useful for identifying different regions of the body. Uh, these rectangles can be used to identify inflow and outflow areas. They can be used to adjust different surface patches uh, and things like that. So another really useful subsurface component in VSP.